What is up guys, back to Speed coming at ya. Great little episode today following up an episode you may have seen if you're a fan of the channel and subscribed. Recently, the last time we brought the AEA Zeus, good lord, monsoon conditions out here. Last time we brought the AEA Zeus out to the range with us guys, we actually ended up grenading our uh, 4x32 center point optic that was on that rifle within three or four shots. It just completely shit the bed. I have done nothing to this rifle whatsoever since it came home. Basically, it sat in its lonely case until the point of filming currently. And I want to kind of investigate a little bit what happened here. I do have some tools, I do have some replacements, and I do kind of want to get to the bottom of this. Let's see exactly what happened. As you guys can probably see here, this is definitely a very diminutive scope for a very large rifle. That's bad news for this optic, dudes. That's bad news here. It's not good, not good. Things served me well for uh, 10 plus years. It was originally sourced on a 760 Pink Pump Master over 10 years ago. And seen some things in its time on my different air rifles. Let's go ahead and see what we can do as far as a replacement is concerned. First things first, I always do like to make this move directly from the dovetail to the weaver rail. Now I know the Gen 2 Zeus does have a weaver rail built into the top of the receiver, which is a good upgrade. I do like that they did that. But for us stuck with the Gen 1, you know this UTG, this is a great option for this rifle. You know what, honestly, that's really, really, really disappointing and honestly not the first time that I've seen AEA have inconsistencies as far as the manufacturing on their, uh, on their rail sizing. This dovetail is just slightly, slightly, slightly too small to accept this very high quality UTG dovetail to weaver adapter. Now I do have a secondary uh, dovetail to weaver adapter that I can use, but it's going to mean going and getting it. So I'm going to cut the camera real quick, do a quick edit, and uh, come back with the piece that's going to work for us instead of this nicely purchased and paid for piece that should work with this product that doesn't. Alright guys, we have gone ahead and sourced the UTG clamshell style uh, dovetail to weaver adapter that I actually pulled off my Big Cat 1200. I know Gammo in general have very high manufacturing standards, and guess what? That other UTG rail that we just looked at for this rifle slipped right over that dovetail with absolutely no qualms. This rifle appears to have just a slightly smaller than standard dovetail rail, and it was proved out by what we just saw. The clamshell style has a much wider range of adjustability than the interference fit, and it seems to be going on with no problems whatsoever. Let's go ahead and save our hardware for our other scope. And check out our optic. Cool. About the right size for this rig. Probably rings. Maybe a battery. Probably all of the above. 2032 battery. Got a couple of nice little rings for itself. This wind is insane. These look pretty cool to me. Different style knob than I've seen too. 
not really going ahead and tightening them fully yet. I just want to go ahead and get them set to where I can see through the eye relief and see where I'm going to need to sit this thing to be successful. Interesting. To be perfectly honest, I don't like where this eye relief is sitting. I feel like even with these medium profile rings, it's just a little bit too tall. It's passable. It's not like the uh, the original scope from the very first Zeus episode I put out, where I'm having to like you know stretch my jaw as far as it can to this cheek rest to even make the optic work. But by the same token, this is not optimal. I almost feel like I'm wasting my time here and getting myself set up for failure. I feel like I almost need to go to 30 millimeter scope tube dovetail rings. Man, the trial and error of trying to set something up that's going to be not only successful but efficient for you in the field, it can sometimes be a very frustrating road to walk when you're trying to get something set up that you haven't quite gotten right in the past. Previously on this rifle, we've gone ahead and we've had a 4x32 that took a shit on us. We had a way over scope 6 through 24 with some really tall rings that just barely worked for us. We even had a bug buster on some good dovetail rings that seemed to work the best out of all three of those. That's the whole reason why I went with this UTG optic in the first place, it's because I've been so successful with the bug buster. Having said that, I think I'm not going to have the greatest luck with the way it sits currently just because of how high this cheek weld is. Right here. That's just too tall for me. That's that's nowhere near my cheek. I'd really be interested to hear what you guys think in the comments as to whether or not I should just kind of leave well enough alone and shoot it off a sled and do the ammunition testing for you guys, or if you guys think I should just go ahead and invest in some dovetail rings and really get this thing right. Definitely maybe leave me some suggestions as far as what you think some quality dovetail rings might be. Now one thing I've been really disappointed now one thing I've been really disappointed in myself about is I always bring these rifles to the range and half the time they're not zero. I feel like all I do in about a third of my videos is bring a rifle to the range, zero it, and run out of the air charge that I have with me for the day. I don't have a scuba tank that's large enough to go ahead and really fill and top these things in the field, so I'm really limited as far as the shot count that I have with me when I go film it. Enter the Strong Tools Green Laser Bore Sighter, guys. I feel like this is going to be a super investment in efficiency as well as ammunition cost by allowing yourself to get generally on the paper, on the board, before you even start to hit those dials, that's really gonna be an advantage when you go to the range, especially if you deal with PCP air rifles and you only have so many shots per fill with you. Now basically what this little laser bore sighter is gonna do is it's gonna generate a beam that's in perfect, hopefully perfect alignment with your with your barrel. Now why is that important? Because if you know where your barrel is pointing, you can put the crosshairs of your scope on that point and then have a basic guesstimation approximation of where the impact of your bullet's going to be even if you haven't shot your rifle with that scope set up yet. Ooh. Yo. This is bright. This is good, this is good, ah, this is good. This is definitely very good. I am excited about this. The fact that it takes a rechargeable lithium battery that I actually have a pretty good supply of, it's these ones right here. And the fact that I already have a battery charger that fits these is boating, is gonna bode well for me being able to use this thing long term. This thing comes with adapters, little collets that spin into the threaded end of this thing and they're sized 1.7 caliber through 72. So 1.7 pellet guns, 1.7 HMR, all the way through 12 gauge shotguns, you're gonna be able to use this bore sighter. I'm pretty much just gonna to go to the absolute largest one in the mix here.
Well, it is kind of wiggly. Can it be expanded further? Oh yeah. And I can kind of see where it's touching the rifling too. Oh yeah, for sure. It's definitely touching the rifling now. All right, so now that you got this thing in there, bingo. I should be able to see this thing through this scope. Oh, completely. Super slick. This is super slick and it feels robust. Honestly, I'm more happy with this bore cider than with anything else just because of the fact that it could be used across my entire collection. No more taking the 30 cal to the range and playing guesswork with it. No more taking the big nine to the range and playing guesswork with it. One shot zeroing hopefully, two shot zeroing hopefully with the Dragon Claw. These are all expectations as a content creator. You want to bring stuff to the range that works so you can do the true test, not do your own troubleshooting. This is going to be a tool that's going to help us do that on a more consistent basis for you guys. All in all, what have we learned today? Honestly, I can't say too terribly much more about this rifle scope based on the fact that I am unwilling completely to shoot the Zeus in my backyard and won't have any feedback for you until I go to the range this upcoming weekend. Having said that, I purchased it based on the previous successes I've had with UTG's Bug Buster, which is the exact same line of scopes effectively. The shocking takeaway for me, however, was just seeing one more platform from AEA that has that slightly inconsistent rail mounting system. The people at AEA had kind of cautioned me about the fact that their weaver rail might be a little bit inconsistent as far as industry standards on sizing is concerned, and it seems like that trait actually trickles down into the dovetail rail on the first generation AEA Zeus, guys. As much as I'm sure everybody loves these gear reviews, where not a single shot is fired, I think it's going to be a great place to go ahead and end today's very relevant and pertinent episode. If you liked this episode, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, make sure you subscribe for more with that notifications button so that you can stay current on the channel as well as when new videos come out. If you really like this video, make sure you share it so that other people can see it, and I'll catch you boys in the next one.